How's it going guys, Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros and today we're going to be doing a benchmark run on the RX 6700, one of our favorite mid-range graphics cards. It is under $300, comes with 10 gigs of VRAM, and competes very well with some of the cards that have been releasing recently that people aren't super happy about. Should you pick this card up for your next gaming PC build? Well, we're going to talk about that, but first a word from today's sponsor. High quality RAM is essential to ensuring you get maximum performance out of your gaming PC. That's why we love using Lexar Ares RGB DDR5 desktop memory. Lexar's Aries RAM is specifically designed for gaming and it shows. This next-gen DDR5 memory delivers peak performance with speeds up to 6,000 megahertz. It also features an aluminum heatsink to keep those temps under control during those heavy gaming sessions. Lexar's Aries RGB DDR5 also has built-in power management to enhance efficiency and is designed with on-die ECC to improve stability and reliability. If you're a hardcore gamer or PC enthusiast looking to experience superior performance, check out Lexar Aries RGB DDR5 desktop memory through the links in the description down below. And big thanks to Lexar for sponsoring today's video. So this graphics card at the moment is brand new on Amazon Prime shipped for 279. You get 10 gigs of GDDR6 and it has plenty of graphics display out. So we think it's an amazing card, but we're here to actually show you guys so you can have your own opinion. So let's go over some of the key specs of this graphics card and why you should consider it for your next PC build. Now this graphics card is based on the Navi 22 GPU. It is a seven nanometer GPU and was released on June 9th of 2021. This thing is a PCI Gen 4 by 16 card with 10 gigs of GDDR6 memory, which is a big factor because it competes very closely with newer cards coming into the market that only have eight gigs of VRAM. It comes with 2,304 shader units and a suggested power supply of only a 450 watt power supply, which is pretty low for a graphics card with 10 gigs of VRAM. This XFX model is the model that is the best deal right now at under $300, around 200 79 bucks. It does go on sale regularly for even less than that. And you're getting the 10 gigs of VRAM compared to some of the newer cards out there. So if you're really worried about VRAM, this might be a good option for you to play the latest titles. But let's talk about the test bench we're gonna be throwing this graphics card in, and then we'll dive into some games and see exactly how it performs. Now to go over our test bench, we have the Ryzen 7 5700X 8 core 16 thread cooled by a very nice 240 mil liquid cooler for all that cooling capacity. We have 32 gigs of PNY Accelerate 3600 megahertz RGB RAM, a one terabyte team group NVMe SSD. We have an Asus Tough B550 Micro ATX. We have an XPG 650 watt 80 plus bronze power supply. And then all of this is inside of a very nice deep cool case with lots of RGB fans that run very fast so we have good airflow. So now that we talked about the test bench and the graphics card a bit, let's go ahead and slap it in there, play some of our favorite titles and see if you should buy this graphics card in 2023. All right guys, now that we have the RX 6700 on our test bench, let's dive into some games and see how it performs. Now the games we decided to test are as follows. We have Cyberpunk, Far Cry 6, Warzone 2.0, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Apex Legends, and Fortnite. Now we mainly focused on these games because they are popular titles that people like to play. I threw in Jedi Survivor just for the fun of it. It is not a good benchmark because it's incredibly unoptimized, but just for the fun of it, you will see how this thing performs. And we really wanna see at 1440p how this card holds up being a sub $300 graphics card because at the time of recording this video, this XFX model, the Swift model, is $279 on Amazon right now, which is an absolute steal in my opinion for a card with 10 gigs of VRAM and being as new as it is and ready to ship. And if you want to buy one, check the link down below. It will be an affiliate link and it will help us out. But really, we're trying to see how well does this thing perform and if you should really consider it over some of the newer cards that are coming to the market. First up, a game that's going to push this thing to its absolute limits. We got Cyberpunk at 1440p, high preset using quality quality FSR, we got an average of 76 FPS, a minimum of 43, and a max of 103. Not exactly a high refresh rate experience in Cyberpunk, but we're talking 1440p high settings, and using FSR, it allows us to get a very playable experience in a game that is incredibly demanding. Now, when it comes to this graphics card, you're really looking at 1440p, 60 plus FPS, high details in the latest AAA titles, and then when you stretch into esports titles, a 144 plus FPS experience, as you'll see later on throughout the benchmark, but the 10 gigs of VRAM does help this card out a decent amount. We didn't see it get fully maxed in Cyberpunk because we were running FSR and lower details, so we weren't utilizing the VRAM nearly as much. But in those games that do pull a ton of VRAM, newer AAA titles that have come to the market like Last of Us and Hogwarts Legacy and games like that, you will see a benefit of having the 10 gigs of VRAM versus eight in cards that are around the same price point as this one, mm -mm. RTX 4060 Ti. Now let's go to another AAA title. We got Far Cry 6 with the built-in benchmark on old 
ultra settings and this time we did not use FSR because we wanted to see the raw horsepower of this graphics card. We got an average of 83 FPS, a max of 91 and a minimum of 74. Almost 100 plus FPS in Far Cry 6 using the built-in benchmark is pretty impressive on ultra settings. And yeah, that's 1440p. 1440p monitors are one, becoming much more affordable and two, and are really an enthusiast gaming experience that I do recommend. 4K is cool and all, but honestly, a good 1440p high refresh rate monitor is my personal opinion for value for money. Um, if you are looking to take the next step from 1080p and this card works absolutely great for it. And as you'll see in the next games we'll be tested with esports titles, you'll have no problem taking advantage of a high refresh rate display as well. Now let's talk about Warzone 2.0, 1440p balance preset with balanced FSR. We got 140 plus FPS with 120 at times. We did dip down to the 100 range every so often. For the most part, you're getting a 100 plus FPS experience in Warzone 2.0 and I was having a pretty good time. Well, not really, I kept dying over and over again, but you know what? It was still a great gaming experience overall and FSR really helped this card out. Regardless if you love or hate FSR, if you're playing at 1440p, it doesn't look that much different than playing native 1440p. If you want to stretch into 4K, you could with some older games that take advantage of FSR with this card, but I would not really recommend it. I would definitely stick with 1440p or 1080p for this graphics card if you're doing a PC build with it, but you can play competitive titles no problem whatsoever with this graphics card paired with something like a Ryzen 7 5700X like we have in our test bench. Or if you want to go Intel, the i5 12400F, six core 12 thread or an eight core 16 thread, you can build a PC for around $1,000 nowadays using this card that will easily be able to play all those games at 1440p. And if you want to see a build using this graphics card, comment down below and let us know what configuration you want to see. Because when we finish these benchmark videos, we'd like to take the graphics card that we benchmarked and put in a PC build and see how it actually performs and give you all a really cool build guide. So yeah, let us know what you think of that down below. Now for the absolute fun of it, I decided to throw in Jedi Survivor, which is a game that's incredibly unoptimized and really isn't a great benchmark. But when it did release, a lot of people were complaining about low performance on cards with less than stellar VRAM amounts, eight gigs or less. And since it says 10, we decided to test it on medium settings, 1440p using balanced FSR. And we got 60 plus FPS, 70 at times. For context, I played this entire game through on my PC at home with a 2080 Super with eight gigs of VRAM. In the same scenario, I was getting dips below 60. So it does help a bit. Um, the game is is getting optimized slowly but surely, but I was still very happy to see that you're able to get a 60 plus FPS experience in a game that's kind of a dumpster fire, but very fun to play. Now let's dive into the esports titles, which again, I do have to preface, most of these games will be GPU bound, but they are very reliant on a CPU. So your CPU choice does very much matter if you're mainly playing esports titles. In Apex Legends 1440p max settings, we are getting pretty much the cap 144 FPS with dips into the 120s and 130s sometimes in a big open arena game mode. Um, it, it was very playable, very smooth, good frame rate frame times, no real bad latency overall. The milliseconds between frames was really solid and overall it makes for a great competitive experience. You can unlock the frame rate limit in Apex on Steam, but we didn't do that because I honestly thought it was going to dip below that running these ultra settings, but it stayed pretty steady and did dip below that every so often. Running higher settings is probably your best bet. Ultra is kind of ridiculous, honestly, and most people don't run ultra settings in games nowadays. High settings is just fine and give you way more performance. But just for the fun of it, we ran ultra and as you can see, high refresh rate experience. And last but certainly not least, we got good old Fortnite, which again is a very CPU dependent game, but we ran 1440p high settings with quality TSR and we got 120 plus FPS. Fortnite looks really good on higher settings and man, it eats up a lot of RAM. It was using like 16 to 17 gigs of system memory, which is absolutely insane. But to speak of this graphics card, I really, really like it. And I really think this is a car that you should be going for if you're building a mid-range to high-end gaming PC for around $1,000. There are other cards out there. The 4060 Ti does exist, and there's gonna be the 16 gig version that does exist, but it's gonna be even more expensive than this card. And really, the value for the money right now from these AMD graphics cards is absolutely insane. If you wanna see a PC build guide, as I mentioned, let me know in the comment section down below what you wanna see paired with this thing. I'm leaning towards something like a Ryzen 5 5600, try to go as budget-friendly as possible, and just really take advantage of really maxing out this GPU at 1440p and try to make the build a thousand dollars or less. If we can get this thing around 900 bucks, that's gonna be absolutely insane value for the money. So yeah, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this graphics card. And let me know if you decide to pick up one of these cards or if you're just gonna stick with Nvidia because you just love Nvidia. I understand, let me know in the comment section down below. But now that we finished the benchmarking section of today's video, how to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick.
All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking this beautiful three fan XFX graphics card. And yes, the 6700 with 10 gigs of VRAM is an awesome deal at 279, especially brand new with the warranty. Keep in mind, you can also check eBay to find these cards used, or maybe you can get an XT with 12 gigs for cheaper than this one if you do some deal hunting. Yeah, these AMD graphics cards are great value right now. And if you've been on the fence about jumping to AMD and have been really upset with the pricing that Nvidia has to offer, then you should definitely consider one of these AMD cards on the new or used market by checking the links in the description down below. They will be affiliates and they will help us out. Let us know what you think of the RX 6700 non-XT. Is it a graphics card for your next PC build? Do you wanna see a PC build video with this graphics card? Let us know in the comment section down below. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye Now, if you don't wanna to have to worry about any of the stuff that we just said, you just want some FPS, you wanna play your games, and you want a warranty with the whole entire computer, not just the graphics card, check out PCBros.tech. PCBros.tech, gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. Use code Toasty Bros 2 and check out the save 2% on your next purchase. I almost forgot what I was saying there, but you know what? PC Bros just is that great, and you could get mouse pads and desk mats at some point at PC Bros. Some point. I'm like a promise a date. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.